The National Broadcasting Company presents another in the series of famous stories for the young of all ages. Adventure Ahead. This week, a classic story of espionage and intrigue. Green Mantle by John Buchan. A timeless story of the men who fight behind the front. A story of the Secret Service. Adventure Ahead. Green Mantle. The magic word, Green Mantle. The legend that struck terror along the eastern front and as a miracle came true. I want to tell you how it happened. How I came to find the secret of the legend of Green Mantle. It all began at the British Foreign Office one afternoon in the early days of the war. Major Henry? Yes? The colonel's expecting you this way, please. Thank you. Step right in, sir. Morning, Colonel. Well, well, well. How are you, Dick? Ready for your new assignment. <laughs> I'd hardly recognize you in that civilian <laughs> outfit. <laughs> does seem a little strange. It's a good disguise. I only hope it fools the Germans as well. Oh? The Germany this time. Very hard of it. Berlin, Vienna, Southern Europe, right under the noses of the German Secret Service. I see. Must be important. Dick, the course of the war in the Southeast may well depend upon information that you and your assistants obtain. Oh, then I'm not working alone, sir. Well, not entirely. It's a dangerous mission. I've assigned two men to help you. Uh, just a moment. Yes, sir? Uh, send in Blenkiron and Sandy Cospatrick, will you? Yes, sir. Sandy? Is he back from the Crimea? Arrived a few days ago. Sandy's the only one of our staff familiar with the mountains of southern Europe. He'll be invaluable. I'm sure he will, sir. And I'm sending Blenkiron because you may need some help in Germany before you get... Ah, here they are. Uh, come in, please, will you? Well... Hello, Dick. Sandy, how are you? Ready for another go at the Bosch. Good, so am I. Uh, Dick, this is John Blenkiron, uh, Major Dick Hannock. How do you do, Major? Pleasure to work with you. Thanks. Gentlemen, I'll come directly to the point. As you know, the Russians have finally fought the Germans to a standstill in the southeast of Europe. A stalemate that promises to last for several months. But what you don't know is that there's a growing tension down there. Rumblings of trouble among the wild nomadic mountain tribes. Well... What's that to do with the war? Well, those natives might throw thousands of armed men into the conflict. Against the Germans? No, Dick. Against our allies, the Russians. But... But why? We don't know for certain. But it's our guess that the regular German troops are worn, tired, exhausted. And failing to get large reinforcements, the German Secret Service may have hit upon a scheme of inciting the natives to revolt. To break the stalemate. Exactly. But, Colonel... Yes, Andy. I don't see how the Germans could do it. I, I've lived and worked with those native tribes, even speak their language. I know their feelings about war and their deep religious customs. It, it just doesn't seem possible. But the fact remains, Sandy. Reports from our agents in Turkey, Iran, Afghanistan, all tell the same story. There's some sort of feeling of unrest down there, and it spells trouble for the Allies. And you believe Germany's behind it, Colonel? I'm certain of it, Blanca. Of course, when it comes, the uprising will be more like a like a holy war, a crusade. Yes, and the natives are probably only waiting for some sort of religious revelation, like a star, a man, a prophecy, to set off the fireworks. Yes, but, Sandy, how, how could something like that cause them to revolt? They are deeply religious, Dick, and devoted to their leaders and their prophets. Why, well, I expect they'd follow a chosen leader into battle against any foe. And if the Germans knew something of that intense religious feeling, they could control an uprising and turn the natives against the Russians. Yes, it's quite possible. That, gentlemen, is your mission. To go into the mountains of southern Europe. To find that secret. And, if possible, to stop the uprising. And your plan of attack, Colonel? Simple. The three of you must separate and operate alone. Then I want you to meet together, say, in um, two months. At a rendezvous in the mountains somewhere near the Black Sea. Dondra Edor would be a good place to meet, Colonel. All right, Sandy. It's in German hands, of course, but it's near the native stronghold in the mountains. Good. And we'll meet at Dondra Edor. Two months from today. Now... As to your departure from England, Sandy's going directly to Istanbul, disguised as a Turkish seaman, and from there north into the mountains. Yes, Colonel. But you, Dick, and Blenkiron are going through Germany to southern Europe the hard way. Mm, I take it there's work to be done en route. <laughs> right, Mr. Blenkiron. The Major's traveling alone, of course. But I'm counting on you to follow him in case he needs help. Yes, sir, I understand. You'll pose as engineers from neutral countries. 
But since you both speak German fluently, you'll have no trouble passing as citizens once you're inside Germany. On your shoulders, Dick, falls the greatest burden. Yes, Colonel? You must find out something about this unknown trouble that's brewing in the South. I can't tell you where to get the information because I don't know. Look for the answer in Berlin first. Then Vienna. Caucasus, anyway. Yes, sir. Here's the address of Otto Spion, one of our agents in Berlin. Mm -hmm. Maybe he can help you. And if possible, I want you to become acquainted with the Colonel von Stumm. Von Stumm. He's head of the German Secret Service in Southern Europe. Just now he's in the north, according to Otto Spion. I see. That's all I can tell you, Dick. The rest is up to you. Your mission's difficult, if not almost impossible. You may not succeed. I understand, sir. But if you three do meet again, two months from now in Donra Adol, perhaps you'll know the secret of the trouble. <laughs> Sandy left for Istanbul that night, and leaving Blank Iron to follow me within a week, I flew from England to a neutral country, carefully rehearsing the part that I must play to gain the German's confidence. And I had not long to wait, for on arrival at the airport, I was questioned at the German passport office. Senor Henne? See? Si? Your passport and papers seem to be in order. Good. But uh, they are curious about your business in Germany. Oh. Why do you insist upon flying to Berlin immediately? Why? Because I'm an industrial engineer, as you can see from my papers. Yeah. And I bring many suggestions which I think your Ministry of Labor will find of interest, particularly plans for the commercial development of the Crimea. Oh, I see. It is important that I reach Berlin soon. Of course, Senor Henne. It can be arranged. In fact, I can give you transportation on the next plane. <laughs> No, senor, it is impossible to find a hotel room anywhere in Berlin. But I must find one. Here, now. Well, I... I see what I can do, senor. Who is that man? A new one. His name is Honey, a new one. But his face seems familiar. You have checked his passport? Of course. Everything is in order. I went everywhere in Berlin, mingled with the military, the politicians, attended all the theaters, the meetings, the cafes, hoping to hear some word or phrase, some bit of information that would help me. But there was nothing. And then, after two weeks, when I thought that it was safe, I looked for Otto Spion, our agent in Berlin. Ah, good evening, Fräulein. Good evening. I just happened to be passing by your shop. I thought I'd stop in. Yeah, mein Herr. Very nice shop you have here, Fräulein. It belongs to my father. Oh? Herr Otto Spion? Yeah, mein Herr. Is he in, perhaps? I'd like to see him. No, he is not here just now. Oh, that's too bad. I've come a long way to see him. Would you tell him that Richard Hannay paid a visit? Oh, you are... You are Mr. Hannay. Yes. Oh, we've been expecting you just a moment. Papa! Papa, come into the shop! Oh. Mr. Henney! Oh, well, good, good. Mr. Henney, huh? I'm glad you arrived safely, sir. Thank you, Hashbjorn. Your friend, Mr. Blankiron, was here a few days ago. Blankiron, here? <laughs> he seems to know more about you than you do about him. Well, I've been busy ever since I arrived, looking for stray bits of information and trying to locate Colonel von Stumm. Von Stumm? He's in Vienna. Vienna? His home is there. Oh. Uh, why do you want to see him? I must find some vital information. He's a difficult, dangerous man. What kind of information are you looking for? I must find out about the situation near the front in southern Europe, about the nomad tribes in the mountains. The, the mountains? Oh, I see I startle you, Herr Spion. Indeed you do. Only yesterday, one of our men, Herr Mittel, returned from that region, the mountains. What did he tell you? What did he say? He was afraid to talk, even to me. He told you nothing? He was even afraid to write a report. Where can I reach him? I'll give you his address. It's near the Wilmstrasse. I'll find it. But be careful. Herr Mittel said he thinks that he's being followed. <laughs> Oh, 
All the way across Berlin I ran, into a shabby tenement, up the noisy stairs to the unlocked door of Mittel's room. But I was too late, by minutes, for he'd been shot within the hour and lay there weak and dying on the floor before me. Mittel, Mittel, speak to me. I'm your friend. Try to talk to me. Mittel, try to talk. Tell me about the trouble in the south, the mountains. Trouble will be trouble. Yes, yes, I know, but what's going to happen there? Happen? Happen? Yes, yes. Green mantle. Green mantle. That one meaningless word, green mantle, and he was dead. The first time I'd heard it, but that word was destined to roar in my brain a thousand times again. I knew it was important, and I resolved to go to Vienna to see von Stumm. But I must see the colonel. I am sorry, mein Herr. He is conferring with the deputy. Colonel von Stumm cannot be disturbed. But it is important. It uh, concerns his interest in the south, the mountains. The mountains? Yes. Oh, I am certain the colonel will see you immediately. I must apologize for keeping you waiting, her honey. That's quite all right, Colonel. I was discussing some matters with Rasta Bay, the young man who passed you in the doorway. You know him? No, Colonel. He also is concerned with the mountainous region near the Russian line. Oh. Um, but suppose you come to the point of your visit, her honey. What interest do you have in the region? My interest, Colonel is mainly one of economics. Oh, so. As I've told you, the government in Berlin has directed me to survey the newly conquered territory with a view toward uh, establishing certain slave labor factories. Oh. And you wish to know something of the possibilities of the region in that regard? Exactly, uh, Colonel. Oh, well, I can give you that sort of information, I suppose. Uh, just a moment, I get my portfolio. And here we are. My plans are in here. Uh, even the plans for green mantle? What did you say? What do you know about Greenman? Why, why, nothing, Colonel. Then how did you know that name? Oh, rumor, perhaps. I heard it mentioned around the government offices. No one seems to know much about it. Oh, I see. Uh, that's different. <laughs> I'm sorry, Colonel. I didn't realize it was a military secret. But I, I'm sorry. That's oh, all right, huh, honey. You'll be able to read all about Greenman someday after the fall of Russia. <laughs> but until then, the plans will have to stay right here in my portfolio. I knew then that part of the secret of Green Mantle was in Vienna, and somehow I must get those papers. Walking back from my visit near the Bristol Hotel, I had a strange encounter when... Oh, no. <laughs> uh, I beg your pardon. Quite all right. My fault. I was... Plain iron. Shh. Careful. Let's step down this alley. No idea how glad I am to see you, Blankiron. I'm at your service, Major. Blankiron, want to commit a burglary? Of course. <laughs> what is it, a piano? <laughs> Other than that, some confidential papers in a portfolio at von Stumm. But that place is surrounded by policemen, soldiers, day and night. That's right. Won't be a simple task. Mm. But I think we can handle it, Major. First of all, we'll have to borrow a few boxes of groceries. <laughs> You two cannot enter the colonel's residence? That we must. These groceries are for Colonel von Sturm himself. A special order. Well, all right. You can go in. But there must be a mistake. We did not order all these groceries. We don't know about that. All we do is deliver. Well, you can leave them if you must. I'll tell the colonel about it as soon as he wakes up. <laughs> This is the bedroom. Mm -hmm. Keep your gun handy. You may need it. Right, Major. Careful now. Oh, there he is, asleep. Mm -hmm. And there's a portfolio. Go ahead, Major. I'll keep him covered. All right. I'll step here by his bed so that he hey, can't... Hey. What are you two doing here? Who are you? What are you doing? Don't move, Colonel Von Stumann. Keep quiet. Stop, stop, stop. You can't... My portfolio. The plans. No, you can't. You can't. I told you to keep quiet. But, but you can't. Close the papers, plans. Major. Yes, these are the ones... At least part of the information about Green Mantle. You, I should have suspected you from the first. But fortunately, you didn't, Colonel. You'll never get away with this, you, you English swine. Will you keep quiet? I'll track you down if it is the last.